Ladies and gentlemen, out there in Lake Oswego, Oregon, we go to visit with my ex-wife, Ronnie Bennett. Best ex-wife okay. I've ever had, by the way, I'll tell you. Yeah. It's what? You're the best ex-wife I've ever had. <laughs> what? I don't know what that means. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. You're the one that I still have an ongoing relationship with, which is nice, is really nice. And... Uh, 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 Ronnie, we've told you in the past, has a touch of the cancer. So a we'll, touch of the cancer. A touch is of that the what cancer. We're calling it now? Well, I, I years ago, a uh, little Richard. I don't know. Maybe you were with me at the time. I was supposed to have him on as a guest, and he had to bake out. And the excuse he used was, "I have a touch of the cancer." That's a great line. <laughs> I and like I went, it. What the fuck I is it? The cancer. Actually, I'm calling mine my predicament. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, if I have the prostate cancer thing, which is about an 85 percent chance I I do, uh, it it really, in its own way, is a touch of the cancer uh, because it's a sm- it's it's a light cancer, okay, that they can take care of by medicine and hormones and things like that. But anyway, um, uh, no, I don't want to talk about health that much today, but uh, you asked me before we went on, how am I? And I told you I had a tooth removed. And then you asked me, am I going to get it replaced? Meaning, am I going to get an implant? You don't just no, grow it. Well, there you, are other kinds of replacement. Well, I am going to get a replacement tomorrow. It's what they call a clipper. Mm-hmm. And that just... Boom, booms, right. And I used one of those the last time I had a tooth pulled and I was waiting for an implant and everything had to get better. It takes like about three months before it heals enough that they can put in the implant and then another three months before they can say, okay, the implant is solidly in there. And meanwhile, you wear this, this clipper, this little uh, tooth that goes on like that. <laughs> And I went, uh, I, I, I enjoyed it so much that by the time it was time to get the implant, I was questioning whether I wanted the implant or not, because that was so easy. Every morning I just went clip, and it, it you know, it didn't bother me, and it felt like another tooth. So, And I figure, you know, I don't want to get an implant, because at my age, how long am I going to be able to use it? You know? if I, well, I mean, that that's what you have to weigh at our age, you know? Is yeah. it worth probably a you know, some amount of thousands of dollars, or not. <laughs> which, which gets and us around... there's no way to know. Well, which gets us around to your specialty about getting older, which is uh, featured in your uh, uh, blog at uh, timegoesby.net. Uh, and that is, you know, there are things as you get older that you start weighing. If I were 50 right now, yeah, I'd get an implant in a heartbeat, okay? I wouldn't even think twice about it. But at my age, I'm thinking, eh, I'm, okay, let's say I live to be 100. Then I'm wrong on this, okay? But I'm not, I, I, my mother lived that long, but I don't think I'm going to have the same genetic uh, predilection, okay? So you have to question, uh, do, is it worth putting $5,000 worth of hardware in your mouth, uh, given your time left. Now, if I were had tons of dough, I guess I'd do it. What the hell? I got nothing else to do with my life, right? But, uh, you know, at, at our age, you have to weigh that against the longevity. So that's why you see old people with missing teeth a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, um, you know, one of the things, one of the first things I decided to get rid of when they first told me that I had this cancer was, oh, goody, I never have to exercise again. I give that up. Well, now I've slightly gone back because they've extended my potential life a little bit, and I would like to be able to function, so I need a little exercise, so I'm going back to that. But another one was that unless I am in screaming pain, no more dentists. I have spent so many tens of thousands of dollars Oh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. And no more. I'm done. You know. And speaking of implants, I consider tooth implants like cataract surgery the two two of the most successful and fantastic things for old people. Um, what do you know that they can grow? Well, you know this because you've had it before. They can grow bone in there. 
Oh, yeah. Regrow bone. Oh, yeah. And then you, that's what you wait the few months for, for it to get hard. And then they can put the implant in. I was just amazed. I had no idea we could do that. Well, uh, they, they couldn't put the bone graft in my mouth because I had an infection. But he said at a later date, we can do the bone graft. Yeah. You know, yeah. they can do it at any point. And they just put it in there, and then it gets hard, and it, you know, eventually becomes bone. It's pretty amazing, just yeah. like cataract surgery. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah. Just, um, when I had, cat I guess it's four or five years ago that I had cataract surgery. I had surgery. them in both eyes. Um, and I have one for distance and one for close-up, so I don't have to wear reading glasses. Yeah. and Which is how I wore contact lenses for years and years. Yeah. And it was completely, I mean, it takes 20 minutes to, to get your eye done or less, you know. And but do you, you know that that it. operation, that cataract operation years ago, wasn't that simple? I mean, well, we're uh, not living in years ago. It, well, no, but I mean, now. it wasn't. It wasn't that simple. You used to have to sleep on a pillow for three months. It kept your head from moving. I mean, it was that difficult. I wasn't there then. I'm here now. And it, then I got mine, and you're right. It was like. 10 minutes maybe, 15 minutes, if, if, if he really was at, at working too hard uh, or wasn't skilled enough. I had this one doctor. It is truly a miracle. I it's went into the, uh, into the place, and there were like 10 people all in chairs waiting to go in and have it done. And he did one after another, after another, after another, <laughs> after another. Know. You know, I mean, and it was all on a, like he did, does it on a Wednesday, right? So when he walks out of there, he's made... God knows how much money. But uh, wow. the cataract surgery I, works. I just think that it's such a miracle that we can do that. Other uh, People for centuries, until this century, until the 20th century, went blind. And there was nothing we could do for right. all that time. Right, right. And I can see like a brand new baby now, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, these are things that, for instance, for old people, well, most old people will wind up getting some kind of cataract surgery. It's just, you know. It, it happens. All of a sudden, you notice this blurry spot in the middle of your eye, and you go, I better go see the eye doctor. And he goes, well, it's ripe. That's the term they use. It's ripe. Mine didn't, but uh, that's okay. Now, you know, if, if what your the title, the subtitle of your, uh, of your uh, blog is what it's like to get old. But it's really like to get old. It's really like to get old. And this is, these are facts of life that if people are listening to us, if you're young and you're listening to this and going, I don't need this, I don't need to hear about this, the fact of the matter is, yes, you do, because it's going to happen to you. No matter how you, how you parse it, it's going to happen to you. And, and um, so I, I often say, well, think of us as the Sacagawea of aging. You know, we're out in front of the Lewis and Clark party seeing the, the road ahead, as it were. And it's true. You don't think you're going to live this long. That, that's the first thing. You know, well, I always thought I was going to live forever. But, uh, and that's when you're a kid. Uh, that's why you do so many risky things. Uh, but as you get older, you never think you're going to get to this age. And then once you're to this age, now I realize why people are cranky. I realize, <laughs> you know, why, why we, uh, you know, it, all, all the things that we, we made fun about with aging. I, I move a little slower, you know. I think my voice hasn't really changed that much. I think my no. voice is kind of still remains somewhat youthful. If I didn't have the stupidity of showing myself on this program, nobody would know how old I was, you know. Mm. But then again, I start griping about things, and they know exactly how old I am. Well, you know, when you start talking about prostate cancer, people can guess. Uh, yeah, well, no, but prostate cancer, you can get, if you get it younger, then you got to have the prostate removed. If you get it older, they don't do that. Because it's a slower growing uh, prostate cancer, so it's different when you're. If you get it at eighty, you're fine. You know they'll treat yeah. it with hormones. They'll treat it with the, not radiation. They treat it with. They can do some chemical stuff. I mean, it, it's it's manageable. Okay, there. The word they used to me was something else will get you, and I went, oh, that's that's nice. You know, my doctor said I can keep you alive till you're ninety five. I said, well, that's fine. I said, but my mother lived to be 100. How are you going to deal with that one, pal? <laughs> you know. I don't think of how long our parents live have yeah. much to do with how long we live. 
Uh, let me ask you some questions about what's going on uh, politically in our country. Oh, okay. I don't and, know. I've got the answers. And, and how it affects your older audience. I mean, it almost seems like they're trying to kill us old people. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the Republicans they, have been trying to do that since 1935. Yeah, but it, but it, but now they've got the power to do it. I mean, when you talk about making changes in Medicare, when you talk about making changes in Medicaid, you're talking about killing people. Yes, you are. And uh, I'm I'm wondering if we shouldn't get around and start killing them. I mean, I hate to be sound like some kind of assassin, but you know, isn't this a fight for life that we're fighting here now? And, and how do you stop them? Well, you have to elect the right people. It's a hard process in, in our form of government. It's very difficult. I, one of the questions this week or today and yesterday that I have is that the person in the office in the White House, one of the people in the office in the White House that approves, does the homework and research and approves or disapproves um, uh, <laughs> allowing you to see, uh, I'm having a chemo brain attack. Yeah, here, okay. Uh, that allows you to uh, have top secret clearance of some kind, you know, mm -hmm. one of those kinds. Um, rejected uh, J Jared Kushner, the president's son in law. And uh, then it was the headline this morning right. was that the White House ordered that man in that office that approves top secret clearances or secret clearances um, ordered him not to appear in the subpoena that was issued by the Democratic House to talk about how these people who were disapproved who did not have the proper good credentials to have a secret clearance mm -hmm were given it anyway at the order of the president. And now the president has ordered that that person not appear at the subpoena that was given him. Can a president do that? No, that's obstruction of justice. Well, no, 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 don't call that because nobody knows what that means right now. Yeah. And everybody has a different definition I don't of it. think he can, can do that. Can a president no. legally do that without no. all this mishmash of what we think Obstruction of justice. You see, the trouble with Trump is he mixes up running a business, which he didn't do very well, with running but the country. That's not my question, no, Alex. But, that's really well, not my well, question. Well, the answer to the question, my question is, is no. Very I don't. I don't is think it he, legal for him to do that. I don't think so. And how do we find? Because certainly nobody in the media has asked that question this morning. Yeah. I yeah. can find. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, is that McGann you're thinking of? No, it's not McGann. It's another person. In, that's a separate subpoena. Yeah. Different one that apparently he is going to honor. But this is a person in the office who's been there through past administrations that works on clearances for secret, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, whatever you call that thing. Help me with my chemo brain. <laughs> yeah, well, the clearances. Yeah, I mean, uh, in, for for uh, FBI and so on. Hell, I, I had a top secret clearance in the military. I got it. But then again, I'm no Jared Kushner. Uh, you know. By the way, did you see well, what he did? This morning, you, there was a, yeah, he was being yeah, interviewed somewhere yeah. this morning uh, and said that a couple... A couple of ads on Facebook refer, referring to ones from right. Russia yeah. don't really matter. Compared really? to compared to the really? damage that was matter. the damage that was done going after Trump. That's how he, he put it. You know. It doesn't equal a couple of Facebook ads. That's right. how he put it. A couple of Facebook ads, folks. You know, I mean, let's face it, uh, Jared, your father in law is in the White House right now because somebody game the system okay period that's it he's he to begin with he didn't win he lost by about three million votes but secondly he uh, he game the, the game the system and um allowed others to do it for him including the russians i mean he didn't go when he heard that the russians were doing something go to the russians and say stop doing that and then go to the fbi and say guess what they've tried to do to me he didn't do any of that he just, it just was kind of a benign neglect because he knew it was to his benefit. 
you know, I, I don't know if it was benign neglect. I think it was more serious than that. Yeah. Um, and uh, and what's what some people have been talking about, and I agree with, is that after what is it three and a half years, if you count the campaign, yeah, that we've been subjected to this um, this person, this crude, awful person. Even if he didn't do anything that we think is illegal, he's just. Crude. Off. <laughs> he's he's off. a terrible person, and uh, and he's our president. I mean, how you just don't know how that can happen. You, you know what gets me about him most of all is what I call his Mussolini face. Do you, you know what I'm talking about? There's a look that he has of sternness that kind of looks like Mussolini. Mussolini oh, okay, used to take well, that posture. I, I I haven't seen enough photographs of Mussolini apparently, um, but. Uh, but what's happened in these three, three and a half years is that his behavior has become normal and we aren't outraged anymore. And, and I mean, think if Obama had even said one of the awful things that Trump said. If he had said. said one of the words he said, I mean, he used bullshit the other day. If, well, if, everybody's done if, that if, if Obama had used the word bullshit, they would have gone apoplectic. Um, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, you know, and now the whole argument about impeachment, I, I don't have any opinion on, I can't make sense of for myself. No, no. Of whether it's the right well, thing to do Well, I've come to the determination that if you started the impeachment today, it wouldn't be over till the election or past the election. So why even start it now? <clears throat> you know, it's really a waste of our time. Better to put our efforts into not getting him reelected. That's the best form of impeachment. Yeah. Well, there are some people arguing that an impeachment hearing, as opposed to the actual impeachment vote itself, mm -hmm. would educate the country further about what he's been doing that is not, if not illegal, is not right. Yeah. Let me ask you this. We got a bunch, of, we got more candidates on the Democratic oh, side. Somebody that, please go home. It's like a gangbang. You know, yeah. it's really, it's, it's, and then uh, it looks like Biden's going to be in it on, uh, on, on Thursday. Thursday. Uh, and, um, which I think is a mistake personally, but let him go ahead and try. Uh, but which one of these candidates would be best for your readers, your, your older audience that reads your blog? Which of these candidates is speaking best to their needs? I don't want to select a candidate based on anything that narrow it would be the same as doing it for uh, how I felt about abortion or gun ownership and that sort of thing. The country needs help, the whole country, include old people, young people, everybody. Yeah. And, um, and the person, I mean, I'm not making any decisions yet, but, and, you know, we've got all the primaries to go through, which will change everything. But, I'm really impressed with that guy whose last name I can't pronounce. I, I was going to say the same thing. He is my favorite of the whole bunch. I mean, he's really, he's smart. He's thoughtful. He's put a whole lot of work into his positions. He's a reasonable human being. You know, the other one who's about his age that got a little ahead of him for a while, the one who always stands on tables and does this while he's talking. Yeah, you know? but, but... He's a little bit too volatile He, he, he was too me. goofy. He was too goofy. But this guy, I think, could be the Trump killer. And here's why I think he could be the Trump killer. What can Trump say about him? I mean, he's gay, but he can't go after that because he's so openly gay that the president would look kind of like homophobic if he even said anything about it. I don't think he cares, though. You he doesn't he care what he looks like to people. But, but look, you got a guy here who went to Harvard, right? Speaks <laughs> nine languages, I think it is. I know! Is that amazing? By the way, plays the piano. I just thought I'd throw that one in as, a, right. as another plus. Uh, he served two tours in Afghanistan, all right? What in the world can Trump say bad about this guy? I mean, he's only, what, he's 36, 37, and he's truly a renaissance man. Oh, by the way, the, it, Trump can't say he hasn't had experience because he's had more experience than Trump did. Trump did, right, yes. But, of course, Trump, it doesn't matter to Trump what he says, whether it's a lie or not. He just keeps saying it anyway. Yeah. But, uh, uh, 
I just, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm not ready to make a pick yet, but I hope people pay attention to him. I think he's quite oh, a brilliant he's, man. He's, he's like a number. And he's not, you know, yeah. you know, I, I always kind of liked Al Gore, but he was kind of above it all. Mm-hmm. And Mayor Pete is not above it all. Right. And um, and I just I just think he's so incredibly sane, has so many good ideas, has really put thought into it, cares about the country, um, is a reasonable human being when he stands up there and talks. You know. <laughs> you and I both agree on this. You know, and I look at all the other candidates and I go, you know, am I wrong for saying, for instance, that um, Biden's too old? Um, uh, what's his name um, uh, from uh, Vermont? Uh, Bernie Sanders. Too, uh, I think too old for the job. I think now, 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 give me the reason behind the too old. Okay, too old is I know how I am at seventy nine. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know that I would have the strength day to day to go through that thing as as easily as a younger person would. I mean, I think. Uh, Mayor Pete, if he became president, would start uh, hit the ground running. Okay, uh, Biden would hit the ground walking. <laughs> All right. No, I a- don't. I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, but um, I, 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 I agree with you about the day-to-day work. I mean, you wouldn't know it from President Trump. But it's hard work to be a real president. He's not a real president. Right. Trump. Right. But to be a real... And by the way, there's something I've been meaning to bring up with people I'm talking politics with. Um, is do you remember the days... <laughs> now, this is a stretch after three years of Trump. Yeah. But do you remember the days when we never heard anything about the president unless he signed something or met a dignitary... Uh, he went about his business in the White House. Yeah. Once in a while, he went to the Rose Garden to sign something, or he had the head of another country come to visit, and we saw pretty pictures of the state dinner and that sort of thing. But unless he did something big, he went about his business, oh, uh, and we uh, went we, about ours. All we, we have didn't to, hear from all him we have every to do, day. All we have to do for that is go back to Obama. I mean, you yes. heard from Obama about maybe once every week, right? Meanwhile, he was just doing the job. And by the way... I think the perfect age for being president, because he never looked winded from the job. He never looked <laughs> exhausted from the job. On the other hand, he was old enough to have the life experience to take care of a lot of the things that he mm-hmm. did. And he didn't start out being a great president, but I think by the end of his two terms, I think he learned how to be a pretty good one. Well, yeah. that seems to be the way we do it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, let's face it. It is an earn while you learn job. Nobody else has ha- you know, has that job prior to having that job unless it's a re-election. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, for instance, Pete, Mayor Pete, has better experience because at least he knows budgets and, you know, having to deal with, uh, with running a, uh, a government. Uh, bureaucracy, yes. Yeah, and and uh, I don't think even Obama had that ability because he was a senator. Uh, you know, governors usually make the best presidents in a lot of cases because they've had to go through those same procedures, just now amped up to a whole country. Get what I'm saying? So, anyway, I, <laughs> I, I, I you know, I was watching today, I was watching Kirsten Gillibrand, who I have absolutely no love for after what she did to... Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, the um, the guy from Saturday Night Live, Franken. Franken. Uh, yes. After what she did to Franken, I consider her the worst of all possible human beings, and and was guilty of eating our own, and took a really good lefty out of the out of the out of play. Uh, but she was on today with Andrea Mitchell, and I watched her, and I just said. Give up. Don't even run. Don't even try. You haven't even, you, you can't even get out of the gate. You haven't got the, 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 the she doesn't talk things like you want to hear. She doesn't look very good. I mean, all the things. Oh, 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 oh back up. Oh, what listen. does this look very good? Oh, look very good is very important because today we're living in a televised age. And it's important. I think she looks like a perfectly fine woman. Uh, she looks like a perfectly fine woman, but her her looks are a little on the severe side, you know. 
but if the guy, there are guys that have never smiled in Congress, and you don't object to their looks. Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not objecting to her looks from a look standpoint. I'm saying that all of politics now is cosmetic as well as it is political. You know that that's one of the reasons we kind of like Mayor Pete. He's young. He's youthful. We like. He looks good. You know, he speaks well, you know. So, yes, he is television worthy. Um, I'm trying to think who else is television worthy. Uh, not a lot of them, believe it or not. They all are. Huh? They all are. Well, I don't know. Uh, I, I, but I just think, I, 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 I'm looking at who can win. And I think Mayor Pete could win. <laughs> I think he could win, and I think he could win because... Do you think people our age in large enough numbers, and we're the largest vote, voting bloc, yeah. do you think they would vote for someone his age? Uh, I think they would get behind him, yes. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, here, here's what it comes down to. But you it, know, no. most people 65 and older who vote are Republicans. Okay, but here's what it gets down to. It gets down to the message. What are you saying to the people, and how convincing are you in what you're saying? And you can get into some of that Republican block by appealing to those people and their needs, as well as those of the people on the left, okay? So it, it's a matter of message. And it's a, and I, you know, I think a lot of older women would look at him and say, he's so cute, I think I'll vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a nice boy. Looks just like my Plus, son. Plus, right? I'm going to say one other thing, and this this has to do with the homophobia in this country, which would be a problem a little bit for Mayor Pete. Mayor Pete and that is that uh, he doesn't come across as being particularly gay or straight. He comes across just as Mayor Pete, you know? There's not that fey quality that some gays would bring to it. He's just, you know, he, yeah, I mean, he looks good He looks good enough to be gay, but <laughs> outside of that, you know. I don't know. We, we could have a long conversation about what looks gay or not. Well, uh, you, uh, believe me, I can point to some people, and, and you can get a guy from the Himalayas who will point to him and go, gay, you know. I mean, but in the case of Mayor Pete, he doesn't, he's not the kind... It, he, he's almost like Obama in that Obama was a black guy who really didn't exude blackness, okay, when he, at least when he was running. He kind of, he, he was a kind I, of... Alex, I got to interrupt you. I can't wait until people see this tape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking, look, I'm ta what I'm talking about here, Ronnie, is I'm talking about perception, okay, and what people feel comfortable with. I've got to say that Obama was a black guy who a lot of white people could be, feel very comfortable with, okay? If you uh, um, uh, had another black guy who was very black, I mean, had really a, a, a real black patois to him, I think that he would have had a harder time. I think that there was a kind of thing about it, well, he's... You know, he his mother was half was white, so he's half white. They kind of that that worked for him, that worked for him with those white people who might go, eh, black guy is president, eh, you know. So I mean, all I'm saying is it's all perception. It's all perception about whether you look gay, you act gay, you know. But yet, he in public kisses his husband, and I think that's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful message, and I think if he can keep doing that and get away with it and sell it to America, they'll go, well, you know, being gay ain't so bad, you know? Be, love is love. You know? Yeah. From your lips to God's ears. You yeah, know? yeah. I'm not sure about him yet, but of all those, what is it, 674 Democrats who are running, um, he's my favorite so far. Yeah. I'm glad you feel that and, way. And I wouldn't not vote. If, if it came down to Trump versus Bernie mm -hmm. uh, or or Biden, I'd have no trouble voting for the for either of them instead, yeah. Yeah. age or not. Um, hey. I, Trump is dangerous. They're just old. We've run out of time. In fact, we've run over by about five minutes. This may be the longest one we've done. Uh, which shows all the spunk you have going and the uh, elan and whatever. 
And um, I'm sure uh, a lot of people will have enjoyed what we talked about today because they love the politics. They're eager for the politics. They're hooked on <laughs> politics. Anyway, you can find Ronnie Bennett at timegoesby.net. A- anything else that you're cooking up? Not right now, no. I have to go grocery shopping. But what a bore. Okay, you know? and I got to go work out, so what a bore. I get on a bike and I go nowhere anyway Ronnie good talk to you talk to you in a couple of weeks okay take good care bye bye bye